Ah, look we got back at the table, Mr. Major Gary. A grown-up man. A grown-up yeah. man. No crying. Uh, we got no a lot crying of... in politics. Come yeah. on. Yes. Well, I think some people do. <laughs> there are some tears. Recriminations, <laughs> yes, but no crying. Well, we got some questions for you, Major, but yeah. let me frame it up for people here. We're going to begin with uh, a rough morning, actually, for President Biden and Democrats after uh, some stunning election results. Republican Glenn Youngkin beat Democrat Terry McAuliffe in the Virginia governor's race. And in the state of New Jersey, Democratic Governor Phil Murphy is in an extremely close race to keep his job. Both states had been blue for President Biden last year. So, Major, uh, Virginia in particular was a 10-point win for Joe Biden in 2020. Now, in 2021, Democrats couldn't carry it. So, in August, I went down to Richmond for my show, The Takeout, and I interviewed Ralph Northam, the governor. And I asked him two questions. I said, is Terry McAuliffe going to win this race? He said, yes, by five or six points. And I said, how about this issue in Fairfax County and Loudoun County where parents seem displeased with school boards, either on transgender policy, what the curriculum is, or critical race theory? He said, that's not going to matter at all. Virginia voters will not be distracted. It's not an issue at all. Those declarations did not age well. And <laughs> Ralph Northam didn't run Terry McAuliffe's campaign, but he is part of the overall atmosphere in Democratic politics in Virginia. They misread two things. One, that Terry McAuliffe was more popular than he actually was, mm -hmm. and that this issue about what school boards are or aren't doing and how parents either feel empowered or disempowered to talk to their school boards proved to be deeply energizing across the board in Virginia. I don't know if Republicans can translate that nationwide, but it's an issue to keep an eye on. Well, isn't it also that Glenn Youngkin did something positive and well on his own behalf by threading the needle with President Trump between his base and then the never-Trumpers who were turned off by former President Trump? Exactly. He didn't embrace him. I, I was, he did I was not. curious about that. So did that work? Clearly that worked for him. So those who were paying attention the last couple of days say, well, didn't have Trump have some sort of tell-a-rally? Yes. yes. So what happened yes. there was the Youngkin campaign looked at its numbers and said, look, Former President Trump can't deny us victory, and he probably would like to take some credit, so let's let him in, okay? Tactically, keeping an arm's length relationship to former President Trump was essential for Glenn Youngkin to keep this conversation going in Virginia on these other issues not related to Trump. So Republicans can look at that and say, okay, if you need the Trump base to win a primary, use it. But if you're in a general election in a swing state or a blue or purple state, you have to keep your arms distance from President Trump in order to focus on the issues that you find, or the voters that you're trying to speak to, find galvanizing. That's exactly what happened in Virginia. And New Jersey as well. Jack Ginarelli yeah. identified yeah. the economy, taxes, and education down the stretch. Those issues proved vital to him. And as we talked about at 7 o'clock, in the 2020 election, President Trump lost, but lots of Republicans won down ballot. Center-right issues, absent Trump. Center-right yeah. issues in this off-year election, absent Trump, proved Nominally, but this it's not is a, very successful. This is the thing, Major. You were here yesterday and you were saying, everybody keep an eye on New Jersey. Mm -hmm. If there had been a thought bubble, it would have said, what are you talking about, Willis? Exactly. Come because on. New Jersey, it's... Come on, silly boy. What do yeah, you <laughs> that's right, silly boy. It seemed like such a lock for Murphy, yeah. who handled COVID so well. What did you see or what did you know that the rest of us didn't... That many My people first did clue not? in New Jersey came several weeks ago when former President Obama came in for a campaign rally for Governor Murphy. Oh. You do not engage the former president unless oh. you're looking at numbers internally that are ringing alarm bells. And oh. then when the surrogates started coming there, it said to me, the Murphy campaign is nervous about something. They're seeing either softness mm. or a lack of enthusiasm. And that's really what happened in both states for Democrats. They were less enthusiastic in Virginia and New Jersey. So here comes the big conversation. It's going yeah. on right now in the nation's capital. Yeah. Progressives are saying, you know what the problem was? We didn't produce things on the progressive side of the agenda. We let a centrist or a moderate like Joe Manchin of West Virginia take our big, bold, progressive agenda and continue to water it down and didn't produce. Right. Moderates will say, no, no, no. Virginia and, and New Jersey tell us that the country's not yet ready for that expansive progressivism, and you better dial it back. And guess what? They're not going to resolve that today. Might be a bit early, but what does this say about the midterms? It says Democrats have to understand that when they look at suburban voters in lots of key states and places that are nominally democratic, but not entirely democratic, and even places where they appear safely democratic, you better keep that conversation going. You better have deliverable results that you can explain and that touch people's lives. Mm -hmm. Absent that, a center-right agenda that doesn't have President Trump involved can succeed. Can we just look at Virginia for just one second? Because mm -hmm. people say Virginia is a sign of things to come, to your point about the midterms. Why couldn't it be, this is just what happened in Virginia and doesn't so, represent anything else? The center of that question is, does the D.C.-centric political journalist clattering class overemphasize Virginia yeah. because it's in the backyard. Yeah. Yes, it does. 
But right. it doesn't mean when you look at that state, and you look at someone like at Ralph Northman, August telling me, no, Terry McAuliffe's going to win. We've got this. And when you don't have it, mm. and when President Biden, before he gets on Air Force One, says, you know what, we're going to win Virginia. Yes, when yes. I get off the plane, I'm going to see a victory. And he sees a loss. That means you're not seeing what's actually happening on the ground. Mm. That's a telltale lesson in politics. Politics, they say it's a blood sport. And a little blood these days. Thank you very much, Major.